Peace be with you. Dear friends, before it is that we go forth in the service, I simply want to be able to explain the nature of this service. I have to say that in all of my years of ministry, and perhaps many of you in the whole of your lifetime, that this is probably the most peculiar Holy Week that we are experiencing. We are not able to be in person in the houses of the Lord for some of the very important holidays of the Christian church, that of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. The service that is being celebrated this evening focuses upon the wonderful gift that God has bestowed upon his church that Jesus had instituted for the sake of his church, and that is the sacrament of Holy Communion. As we believe, teach, and confess, that indeed, as Scripture so teaches, it is more than just a memorial meal. It is that which also imparts the forgiveness of sins for those who believe in the words given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Though we're not able to celebrate the sacrament this evening, yet it is that the service centers around that so that we might again be reminded of this wonderful gift that God, that Jesus had instituted for the sake of his church, for those who believe in him. And so we go forward in that service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself who sanctify you completely, and may your, soul, your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Our psalmody. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight is the Lord, the death of all his saints. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Those verses coming from Psalm 116. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in the wondrous sacrament you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is at this time that I would like to remind us, through the Catechism, what it is that we believe, teach, and confess concerning the sacrament of the altar. And so it is that I will be both reading the or asking the question and reading the response. And again, these can be found in your catechisms. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, under the bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. 
Where is this written? The holy evangelist Matthew, Mark, Luke, and St. Paul write, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? These words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that the sacrament forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just the eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words have exactly what they say, the forgiveness of sins. Who receives the sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training. But that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared, for the words for you require all hearts to believe. Thus far, the Catechism. Our reading this evening, continuation of the Passion of our Lord, from the Gospel of St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink it again. I will not drink again the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are yours in Christ Jesus, dear friends. The text that we have before us is that which was read from the lectern, the gospel lesson, the continuation of the passion of our Lord. We continue with our Lenten series underneath the overall theme, Eyes on Jesus. And particularly this evening, we look at the theme, uh, More Than Meets the Eye. The Old Testament provides background for the Lord's Supper and the mystery that Jesus makes bread in his body and wine in his blood in order to deliver to us the benefits of his passion. Let's think about this for a little bit. Let me share with you words from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, the institution of the Passover meal. It reads in this way, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And, the household is, if, if, the, and if the household is too small, for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take, uh, shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count uh, uh, for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts of the lintel of the houses in which they eat of it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast it on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head and its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your, right, in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. Thus far the speaking or the institution of the Passover feast. Tonight, as you can only imagine, there seems to be a lot of talk about blood, the Passover feast, and the sacrament of Holy Communion. The sight of blood makes many of us very squeamish. Perhaps bloodiness of our reading strikes you as a odd and primitive, even unsettling. So you need to look under this blood by hearing the word of God to find that there's more than that meets the eye. The Lord had visited plagues upon Egypt. The Passover marked the tenth and the final one. To every house that was not protected by the blood of the consecrated lambs, the Lord came and struck down the firstborn sons. On the other hand, the Lord caused the destroyer to pass over the houses marked by the blood of the Lamb. This was such a momentous occasion that God commanded his people to celebrate the Passover annually as a memorial meal. Moses told the people, when you come to the land of the Lord uh, will give you, and he has, uh, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service, you shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel and Egypt when he struck the Egyptians but spared our houses. Those words recorded 
in Exodus 12. Now take a hard look, if you will, at the Passover. Dwelling only on the blood and the violence, it might cause us to stumble. It shocks our pacifist sensibilities. What kind of God would perpetuate such wrath against even helpless children? And doesn't it seem morbid or cruel to memorialize such a body, such a horrible event? But we need to look deeper. There's more than that meets the eye. As after Moses had announced the institution of the Passover, we are told the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Again, recorded a little bit later in Exodus 12. They recognize that when the Lord speaks his will, the only proper response is worship. The Passover is all about the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. The Lord had said concerning the Passover, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments, for I am the Lord. The tenth plague was a divine warfare against God's idolatrous enemies, against the Egyptian false gods and the oppressors of his people. And later in Exodus, God said this, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. This means that for under all Egyptian blood, you should not see innocent victims of a capricious God, but impenitent sinners receiving just judgment for the one, from the one holy God. And all of God's acts of judgment are idolatry. Uh, uh, all of, and all of God's acts of judgment on idolatry, from the flood to the Passover to the conquest of Canaan, are intended to warn us about the consequences of idolatry and impenitence. They are previews of the final judgment. You also should see that this judgment is what you deserve and more for your idolatrous sins. For every time that you have not feared, loved, and trusted in the Lord your God with all your heart, you deserve the destroyer to come and to spill your blood on the ground while your soul is taken swiftly to hell for eternal judgment. The Lord is no tame God. The apostle known for writing about God's grace, St. Paul, also writes this, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap, from Galatians chapter 6. For their own sins, the Israelites deserve the same fate as the Egyptians. But now look at the blood of the Passover lambs and see more than what beats the eye. To the naked eye, the blood of lambs and the blood of the Egyptians would appear to be the same sticky red substance. But God attached his word of grace to the lamb's blood and gave his people a means of salvation from the destroyer. Under the blood of the Passover lambs, you do not find any merit or worthiness in the Israelites but only the promise of deliverance from gracious and merciful God. So the Passover was to be celebrated by Israel above all as a remembrance of his election of Israel and his protection and the salvation of them from their enemies. Later the Lord would attach his word of forgiveness to the blood of lambs, goats, and bulls in the sacrificial system operated by the priests in the tabernacle and later on again in the temple. Through the pouring out of blood in the most high holy place, God provided a means of cleansing and forgiveness for his people's sin. The writer of the Hebrews says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And this leads us to find more than meets the eye in the upper room on the night when Jesus was betrayed. It was the Passover meal. So Israel's deliverance from Egypt was in view, and recently shed blood of Passover lambs would be fresh in the disciples' minds. Surely they had celebrated the meal dozens of times beforehand with their families from the time that they were little. And they knew the Passover liturgy by heart. They thought they knew what was coming as they celebrated it with Jesus. But there would be a way more than meet, uh, but there would be way more than that meets the eye. 
when Jesus, the Lord of Israel incarnate, revises the Passover liturgy. Mark writes, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he gave it to them. So far, so good. No surprise. But here's the bombshell. Jesus said over the bread, Take, this is my body. Now imagine if you would, what the disciples might have been thinking. There was more than that meets the eye. Now the Passover being redefined and being not focused on a lamb and on the Old Testament celebration of Passover, but rather upon Jesus, the lamb who came to take away the sins of the world. And so it is that Jesus would then take the cup, as Mark would record, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Again, doesn't seem to be all that different than what they were used to. But then he says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Or you might want to be able to say, poured out on behalf of the masses. Once again, Jesus boggled their minds. Once again, that which is uh, more than meets the eye. All this unprecedented memorial Passover meal, Jesus teaches three main things to his disciples. First, that in a short while, his body would be given and his blood shed by, on the cross. That under the apparently senseless slaughter of a righteous man, they should see his death as a ransom for the masses of humanity, of humanity, for the sins of the whole world. This is God's final judgment on sin. And from that day forward, the only sin that condemns to hell remains idolatry. But specifically, the idolatry of rejecting Jesus and his death from the life of the world. Secondly, Jesus teaches that in a mysterious and supernatural way, there was more than that meets the eye under the simple bread and the wine of an ordinary Passover meal. Now by the power of his word, the bread was truly his body and the wine was truly his blood, given to his disciples for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Further by his words, do this, he instituted the Lord's Supper for his church to proclaim his death to the end of time. And finally, thirdly, Jesus was teaching them that the Passover and the sacrificial system of Israel were types. They pointed to what he had now done. They pointed to his once and for all sacrificial death on the cross. Old Testament ceremonies now give way to the New Testament, which is his blood. John the Baptist had pointed to Jesus and proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Later, St. Paul would write, Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed. At the Lord's Supper and on Good Friday, John's preachings were fulfilled when God's holy spotless Passover Lamb, Jesus Christ, finally offered up his life as a ransom for the masses so that sinners don't have to get what they deserve but instead that Jesus has earned for them. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing forward to the coming of the Lord in the flesh and the Messiah to redeem his people and win forgiveness for not just Israel, but for Gentiles as well, for all who believe. And so it is that we have fulfillment of the Old Testament and what a wonderful blessing that that is. And so it is that we celebrate this night. We celebrate this night that which is more than that meets the eye. Not only a memorial meal as we come forth receiving the sacrament, confessing Christ crucified, but also a meal that imparts wonderful blessings. Blessings, dear friends, that bring to us the forgiveness of sins. And as I like to be able to say, salvation and life. I look forward to the day, dear friends, when once again that we will be in person and that once again we'll have the opportunity to not only be nurtured by God's holy word but also to partake by his invite, his true body, his true blood. 
But now we are sustained in baptismal grace. We are sustained in God's holy word. And so we're able to go forth. Though yearning for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we can go forth blessed by God. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus under life everlasting. Amen. We make profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now again, dear friends, if we were worshiping in person, we would be receiving the offering. Again, I encourage you to continue to offer yourselves up, sharing your time and your talent for the service of your family, respective families, for the service of your neighbors. I would also invite you that if you are able to continue to also forward your offerings to the church so that the ministry of the respective congregations might continue to go forward. Uh, and what a wonderful blessing that, that that would be. I do want to say thank you to the many of you who have uh, sent forth your offerings uh, to the honor and glory of God. It is truly well appreciated. We would take a moment of time now in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, on this solemn night you of your betrayal, you instituted the sacrament in which you feed us your body offered on the cross and your blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Help us to look beyond the humble elements of bread and wine and find in, with, and under them our dearest treasure, so that we may fix our eyes upon you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us truly worthy and well prepared to receive your holy supper by giving us faith in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Help us never to disbelieve these words or to doubt them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you preserved your holy people Israel during the Passover through the blood of lambs and led them out of bondage to Egypt, so also preserve us by your precious blood and lead us out of the bondage of sin and the devil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your church frequently eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord's Supper, so that your death may be proclaimed until you come again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the true food of your body and blood give us confidence that we will forever abide in you and that you will abide in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, grant that we fear no evil knowing that you have promised to those who eat of your body and drink your blood eternal life, and that they will be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you loved your own and the world to the end, so also may we love our neighbors as ourselves and show to the world that we are your disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the saving bath of holy baptism, you have washed us clean and made us acceptable to the Father. May we likewise wash the feet of our neighbors through the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Lord, once again, we offer up the following petitions. That you indeed would continue to watch over those who are in need of health and healing. That you would grant us patience during this time in which it is that this pestilence plagues us. That you would be with our government officials and guide them, dear Lord, in the path that they should go for the blessing of, the, uh, of our nation. For those, dear Lord, who are serving a medical staff, continue to safeguard and protect them from any harm and danger. For our families, for our church family, for teachers and students, that you would bring blessings forward. That you, dear Lord, would uh, be with Pastor Fitch as he contemplates and deliberates the call extended to him to serve as associate pastor at Peace in Nina. That you would guide the brothers and sisters in Christ, the Trinity Ashkash, as they, dear Lord, continue to seek for the one of whom you would want to come and to be under shepherd here in their place. For Pastor Keith Theroux, Associate Pastor Principal of Trinity Manasseh, that you would be with him and his unit as they have been called up to go forth into service. Safeguard them, dear Lord, and protect them as they go forth in serving you and country. It is into your nail-scarred hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves, our body and souls, and that all that we have, trusting that you will grant all of our needs of body and soul. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
as is a part of the tradition of Monday Thursday as a part of our liturgy, and to prepare our hearts for the events of Good Friday, the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, when I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned in the praises of, on the praises of Israel. In your fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. And I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wave their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. And you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you in my father's breast, or at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there's none to help. Many bulls encompassed me, strong bulls of Bashan surrounded me. They opened wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dawn. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. And you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he, was not, he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried on him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All of the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship shall belong to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him will bow all those who uh, will bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. We go in peace.